around here, and I'm back with the famed uh, find, bog find from uh, North Carolina. Uh, this is a bog axe, uh, very well preserved. We've actually tested this on an analog ballistics gel head. It was able to go through the skull, uh, embed in there real nicely, and even able to cut through the neck. It's not a wide blade. You expect a battle axe to be a big old wide blade. Everybody says, this is not a battle axe. You know, looks at it and sees the uh, uh, very wedge shape and the very uh, acute uh, sharp head. But we're going to find out today if it was actually used for armor piercing uh, or was it, uh, you know, maybe something else. But I believe, honestly, the advantage to having the very narrow head is you'll get a deeper penetration with a very hard edge because we can tell this edge here on the actual artifact uh, is extremely I guess hard. hard. It's so been far. forge welded in. You can see where it is welded into the actual uh, two pieces, oh it's actually not two pieces, but a folded piece of iron to make the uh, socket uh, and it's forge welded in so it's a very hard piece of steel I would say. They would call it hard iron back in the day. So that's why it also reinforces my beliefs that this was in Novgorod was a Varangian find. A Varangian soldier or warrior was probably using this axe and probably preferred it due to the large number of uh, armored opponents he was running into. That, that's our theory anyway, and I've nicknamed it the Torslav or Torslav Axe. And if it's uh, Thorslav or Torslav, it could mean the, uh, the uh, Thor of the Slavs, because it looks very much like some of the early Slavic Axes and the later Slavic Axes. It's very much like their designs. Not exact, it looks a lot like the Needham Bog find we see uh, that was actually found in Denmark, in uh, uh, Needham Mosse uh, Bog in uh, uh, a Danish swamp. So anyway, we've got our replica we got made here by uh, Adrian Watson. Uh, it's made out of iron with a hard steel edge, which would basically be like hard, hard iron forged in. Not a very wide edge, maybe two and a half inches at the most. But no, it's not a big broad battle axe for cutting people who are armored, but I believe that that would focus enough energy that it would act a lot like a uh, military pick uh, or an item like that, a war hammer, to focus energy into a smaller area, injuring the man under the nail. What we want to find out today, with the nail that we've tested many a times, uh, we have a uh, riveted and solid row mail. Uh, it's 17 gauge, but most armor like this is not like what I'm wearing that's butted mail, which is bent together. It has to be much heavier. This is 14 gauge that I'm wearing as a vestment. This, this Brynja, or Brynja, Brynja, or Holbert, is a full Holbert, and we've got flat solid rings and then round uh, smushed together riveted rings. So this is a very tough piece of material. Roland Warzeka and I tried Viking Age swords uh, that were uh, within the medium fine range which are a little bit flexible, uh, uh, not too heavy, not too lightweight, and we were unable to thrust through it. We tried thrusting. Cutting? Impossible. You're not going to cut through this. We've tried arrows on this and with arrows uh, up to a uh, 70 pound bow with different types of uh, arrowheads. I wasn't able to pierce this with proper gems and padding behind it. We have padding behind it today. I also, uh, the only thing we have actually made it through with was Roland Varzeka and I using the overarm throwing slide. I was able to pierce it over clay. <laughs> shell today, not clay. And uh, he was able to pierce it with a sliding technique. Conventional spear thrust, we tried to do those on our own before we even started the test and they weren't able to go through. Just, you know, two handed thrust. You know, where you would see like a pipe. But anyway, let's get started. I didn't want to do pig too big of an intro, but uh, I'll show you the setup we've got here. We've got a ballistics gel under the belly. Uh, we've got uh, six layers of uh, tightly woven linen, and then we've got our uh, mail riveted like solid the rail. Tank. There's a hole down here below the gel, way below it. I have a line here to hit under, and then I'll be aiming, focusing for the center. Start off by testing a broader bearded axe that has about the same mass and weight as this axe. I shall swing it from the same fulcrum or point that I'm going to use with this one. I'm not going to use the full length of the handle unless it's absolutely necessary to try harder because uh, that will make a difference if it has a longer handle. But I'm going to try using them both side by side to see the difference in results. This is a five inch blade, very drastically different shape, much easier to hit your target if you have a razor sharp edge on it and cut a man through maybe cloth, uh, you know, what have you, leather, it'll probably go clean through. And even Gambus, we tested against Gambus, ah. depending on how it hits, the axe can possibly cut through Gambus in person. So due to the extra force being focused, even with a broad blade like this, 
you can get through uh, different types of gambeson and so on. But we're going to try on mail, which I know this normally won't go through mail, but we're going to test it anyway. Uh, and then we're going to test this one. This is, is a control because they're about the same mass. They both have hammers on the back. The metal's just distributed differently. Nice hit over the gel, and all we got was some scoring into the rings, not much of anything. What I shall do is I'll hit it again just to make sure it's not a fluke. I don't want to destroy my gel underneath because that won't give us a good test for the actual one we've come to see. So let's go ahead and uh, try again. Oh! Nope, not at all. What's going on? It's hitting. It's distributing the blow amongst a whole bunch of rings, so I don't think it has an actual chance of piercing it, such as a point from the spear or the proper energy behind it, or a, even a sword point if it has enough energy behind it stiff enough. I think it's still possible to penetrate it if it was done properly. Oh. Like when I threw the sword, actually, uh, Yark Sprave's video, I was able to throw a sword through male armor that would be equivalent to this. But that's a little bit different. Let's go ahead and try what we came here for. Start off by holding it by the exact same fulcrum point, about right here, not quite all the way back, which is very plausible as well, because you might not want that much reach, because a lot of times you use the uh, haft or the shaft of the handle, you know, to whatever works best for you at the time. So that will give us plenty of power. This is not the actual artifact, so no one panic here. This is the one made by Adrian Watson uh, in Australia. And it's the handle has been mounted on is oak. Uh, I believe the other handle was ash, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is an oak handle, uh, and uh, it was put on by Wayland, a good friend of mine. Ah! It turned it and kicked it. Looking to see if we have any real damage to the mail. Looks like we might have had damage to the mail, but it just didn't go through. Let's go ahead and try it again. I might even give it just a little more handle. Oh! Oh! It is not going through the armor, but you can tell it's actually hitting a lot harder into the gel. The ballistics gel, we're hitting a lot harder into it, but it is not going through. Might try something totally different. I might try coming in this way and just see what that does. Oh! Ooh! That, we got some damage. That cut a ring. Coming in in that manner, we cut a complete ring. Actually, several rings. Fear not, I have rings to repair this with and I'll be doing a video to repair the thing. Uh, we cut an actual ring out. I'd like to show you all this. I mean, that was a cut. We've got several cuts here. But did we make it into the gel would be the question. I would say we did not actually make it into our opponent, but I could be wrong here. Let's get a look at that one. It made it through our cloth. It hit here. It looks like it scored the cloth. But here are our rings that it cut. We might try that again. Coming straight down seemed to snag the mail and allow it to cut it. Pretty much like the tip shot when I did it on a sword once. Act very much like a sword. Cutting with the tip of a sword, I was able to cut rings, but I wasn't able to really totally injure the man underneath it. As you can see, these are not, uh, that was a solid ring, so it had to be cut. This ring had to be cut because it's the rivet still there. This rivet looks like it might have broke, but no, because of the length of it, you can tell it was cut before the rivet broke. You can see the slice through it. Oh! Ooh. That was nasty. You just hit, but I hit over the hard part of the mannequin, which would probably be more like hitting over the bone with some flesh on it or something. We knocked a massive amount of rings out. And fear not, like I said, the next video you'll be seeing is probably my mail repair video where I've got riveted rings and I'm going to set them They may not all be solid again because I only got riveted, but I will be repairing it with rivets and mail. Uh, rings about the same size, 
same gauge, uh, and we will have fun with that and uh, see what the easiest method is. So I haven't done that very often. And we've cut yet more rings. I just wanted to make a double sure check on the whole thing, make sure for testing. Uh, could it possibly go through this just coming straight in? No, it's definitely damaging the rings more. I'm taking rings out every hit. No problem. The way it's shaped, it cuts them easily. Uh, problem is, it doesn't make it through the uh, padding behind. We're not 100% sure, but I mean, I don't think it would have gone deep enough to do any serious damage other than the impact and the focus of the arm. Let's go ahead and see what's under there. This is over the hard mannequin. Of course, that allowed it to shear more rings. I mean, that's common sense. It'd be like cutting on a chopping block, like somebody had once said I couldn't do, and I knew that it was very plausible. Uh, this, this was over ballistics gelatin. And as you can see, it actually cut through the rivet was at, or snapped there, but we also have cut rings. That is most certainly a cut. You can see that the rivet's still there and the ring itself was cut. Okay, let's go ahead and try to get this off because I want to get a very good look at the gel and just see if we can see any trauma to the gelatin. I think that will be a telling thing. Make it through our cloth. So no matter how many layers we've actually got, so didn't do that. Uh, we have uh, no holes in the gel that I can see. Lots of furriness or whatever we had on the uh, cloth. Uh, the only cut we got that actually came from the axe is when it was able to shear over the hard shell of the mannequin, which is not uh, like flesh or anything on a person possibly, but it cut into it. You can see it actually went into the mannequin. The only thing it might compare to is the hip bones. Maybe if it hit over a bone with like light flesh and not much padding, you didn't have much under the cloth, it would probably do about the same thing and slice into the bone. Maybe that accounts for some of the bone wounds we see that aren't very deep on hips and so on, like you speak of with the shoulder, some forensics historically. But as for the gel, the gel's easy to damage. As you see, it got cut on the mannequin, pushing it up to look at it. But uh, we don't have anything on the actual gel where we have any kind of thing that would cause bleeding from the flesh being cut. But uh, I guarantee you there might have been internal bleeding. And like I thought, without mail and just the cloth, uh, lethal. I almost don't want to take the cloth out. <laughs> Let's try it like this. I want to see that wound with the axe still in it, how deep it is. Uh, did we hit the back side? It's hard to tell. We shall see. I'm going to go ahead and mark it and try to remove it. It's hard to remove from this tougher gel. Uh, we got that deep penetration, so I would say that's over four inches. Matt, Matt Easton would be uh, jealous. Now I don't think it was a fluke. We got it clean through into the gel. Figure I'd test it one more time, make sure we didn't have some kind of fluke. No, the cloth was not stopping it underneath the nail. Just in case anybody might have thought that. Go ahead and take the uh, cloth off one more time. Completely through and into the gel. And I would say we're getting, let's see if we can just take the gel out with the axe head and see how far. Yeah, it's right near the back. Not quite through, but almost. This is some really tough ballistic shows. I would think it's a very lethal axe. You enjoyed our episode? Uh, I would like to thank Waylon for mounting this on the uh, haft or shaft for me. Uh, I would like to thank uh, 
Cold Fork Lofensen, who sent us the axe from Novgorod, the log axe, uh, Torislev or Torslav. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, original artifact that we tested. Thank you, Adrian Watson, for forging the replica of the famed uh, bog action in Novgorod. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, gave us great testing today. I would also like to thank Medieval Shop for helping me procure the uh, mail shirt that we've used in various test videos. And it's very similar to an actual sample that we saw at the Oakshot Institute, a 14th century mail made the same way with solid and riveted rings. Uh, it looks almost identical in a lot of ways. So uh, thank you very much for that. And for the other axes, the oaks we tested, the uh, bearded axe or the war hatchet, you call it. Uh, thank you so much for that one. I don't think that says anything bad about the war hatchet for what it was designed for. And what this was designed for, I think, was actually for the penetration, for actually getting better hits. And yes, we saw the damage to the mail. We know the force had to be more intense underneath it, but it's almost impossible to tell about a live subject, which we would kill the man testing such uh, impacts and blows would be lethal, possibly. So uh, we couldn't do that. But in the future, I plan on testing this on the uh, wrought iron plate that was sent by uh, Adrian Watson that he forged. Uh, actually uh, forge welded it together. So it's a plate that is done in layers like it would have been back in the day and compare it to some actual mild steel to see what the differences are. And we'll probably use this axe on it for sure. I mean, that's what we want to do is test it on plate. Uh, and also maybe uh, we can get hold of some lamellar. Uh, some scale armor is what some people call it, but a lot of people believe it was just lamellar. It was laced together uh, platelets. Uh, little cards of plates of steel. Uh, test that and uh, we're going to come back and do more armor testing with her. Maybe on a helm as well. I have a helm. I already have pre-destined uh, to be hit by this. Uh, sorry, can't do it all in one video, but I think the mail was a telling test. We found out that yes, that it allows it to cut rings out more readily and easily having a low profile head and it seemed to do a lot more damage to the mail than using a uh, broader bladed axe that distributes the blow over a larger area. The only thing that I can see different is maybe if you were hitting with the tip of the broader bladed axe and it had like a beak or a horn to it where it sticks out more and you're just hitting with that, tip shotting it, you'd probably be tearing rings out of the mail as well without hitting with the full breadth. But with this, you're hitting with enough of it that you're getting full force through the armor and the shape of it, you're still cutting rings out at the same time if you come in with it properly. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed our episode. Uh, and as always, uh, for our battle. Oh. And be on the lookout for our mail repair video. Uh, sadly, it, it's long overdue. Yeah, you got more holes than that than the um, church does. <laughs>